Welcome to Comfortable Havoc. I am Echo Flame Grey Wolf. Okay, so I went back and watched the video. However, in my ignorance and my stupidity, I was distracted by whatever was on the phone with the young lady and her boyfriend getting beat up over a PlayStation 5 that I never mentioned what I was supposed to make the third video about. So, yeah. Uh, I have no idea what I was going to make the video about. I literally watched it and I couldn't hear or see what I was supposed to make the video about. I'm sure it probably has something to do with superheroes. But then again, maybe it didn't. But um, I was distracted about um, this stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a different video. And I'm still in this suit right now. But I'm going to make a different video and I just don't feel like getting out of the suit right now. Because once I'm done making this video, I will be getting out of this damn suit. Okay, so there's a lot of things going on in the world. And um, I don't know how to address all of them, but the shooting in Chicago, I want to address that. This was unacceptable, and that this dude even had a plan to dress up as a woman to escape. All right? People are getting famous for all the wrong reasons, and I can't get arrested having any acting company look at me or give me a shot at acting in general. I mean, I got the Spider-Man pose down. Let he who be worthy have the power of Thor. I totally did that wrong. But I know the incantation, uh, the incantation for the hammer. Let thou who art worthy Behold the power of Thor. Now this incantation, incantation, enchantment, whatever. It has been changed a few times in my lifetime. But, let's talk some comics, shall we? Because you guys ought to know, I go into comic book lives and all these things. And um, this is basically a random ass video. <laughs> so since I'm in the suit, we might as well go with comics. Alright, there are a lot of things that go on in comic books that do not defy logic. One of the things is how we have so many different fans who don't want to see their comic character lose. There's not a character in Marvel or DC or Image or Dark Horse that has not taken a fucking L at least once. Okay? At least once. This guy's taken an L and he's also probably the most underrated Spider-Man that ever was because he's the only one who, unlike the rest of the Spider-Man, He's not connected to the life webs of spiders. Okay? So we got that we got that clear. If I had to be a Spider-Man, I have only two favorites. Miguel O'Hara, the suit I'm in, and Ben Riley. That's it. Oh, don't get me wrong. I do love Peter Parker. I love Peter Parker. But those three are it. And sadly, Miguel's story is just a little bit more like adultish or more tight. Because of Nueve is a different beast than New York. And then Miguel eventually does get the hammer. You have to go deep into the comic. And when I first started reading Spider-Man 2099, I was on a 2099 binge. So the only comics that I read are what I normally would read just for 2099. So Spider-Man. Spider-Man 2099. And, and truth be told, when it came out, I really liked Miguel O'Hara. But then I read the X-Men 2099, and their first runs were okay. But then I tried to find Daredevil, I tried to find Punisher, I tried to find the Avengers, and I didn't buy them. I kind of read them in the store, and I was like, eh, you know, they're good, but they're just not my heroes. However, Spider-Man 2099, you know, you can't knock Miguel O'Hara. You really can't. He's just one of the underrated Spider-Men because he's the only Spider-Man who doesn't have a spider sense. He has a hologram named Layla who gives him direct information that can probably hack things. And she's usually on his wrist, his left wrist on a, on a watch, which this suit did not come with. So I'll have to have an accessory. But for the most part, you know, Spider-Man 2099, it's a really good story. The only part of the story that really, really sucks is that his father, his biological father, is his actual enemy, which is Tyler Stone. And that, if like Sony or Marvel sees this video and gives me the job, I would insist that that gets retconned. 
Because I don't think anybody should have their mother be a cheater. You know what I mean? It, it really wouldn't be fair for the character because, you know, he has a Mexican mother. So you're already sending out the word that his Mexican mother's a cheater. However, Miguel was also accused of being a cheater. And then he actually became a cheater. So, um, but then if you go to the other Spider-Man in a different world where he has no fucking hair and he's bald and he's old as fuck and he looks kind of like ridiculously ugly, he married the original Chinese girl that he was supposed to marry in the first place. Now, let's, let's chat about comics as well as anime with things that don't go right. Miguel is an underrated Spider-Man because he doesn't have a spider sense. That's why a lot of people just did not like him because, oh, he doesn't have a spider sense. He's not really Spider-Man because he doesn't have a Spider-Man. I mean, spider sense. But I understand that Miguel's powers also didn't come from a bite. They came from a formula. He was trying to replicate Spider-Man. However, it's not clear about the Spider-Man from his universe before he became Spider-Man. It, it, they touch on it a little bit, but my memory banks are gone, so I don't really remember everything. I'm going to have to go to the comic store and ask them about that. But also, freaking, um, you know, the other situation with that is that, you know, Miguel's younger brother is also like a friend of me. So it's kind of messed up. And the only person that really knew he was Spider-Man was his mom. And then, you know, eventually he does handle um, Alchemex. By the end of the saga, he's running and owning Alchemex. But by blood... He is entitled to own Alchemex anyway because Tyler Stone's his biological father. So Miguel O'Hara's real last name is probably Miguel Stone. But his brother Gabriel is an O'Hara. And his mother is an O'Hara by marriage. But apparently Miguel is an act of infidelity. And that really kind of sucks for a hero to have his mom be an act of infidelity. I mean, you can work it out and you can keep the concept. I would rather they didn't just so his mom doesn't look like she's like some cheap stereotype. No, but I'm also not Mexican. However, I'll play Mexican if you want. I just don't speak Spanish very well. In fact, my um Spanish stops with no habla espanol muy bien. There you go. That's my Spanish right there. And while we're on that, I'm going to tell you a little story about how my Spanish teacher thought I was Mexican. Okay? So I was in college and I had to take Spanish because they didn't offer us Japanese because only two people wanted to take Japanese, me and somebody else. And the school didn't think that that would be okay, so I got forced to take a Spanish class. So during the Spanish class, in the first two weeks of Spanish, I was bombing. And we had this class like almost every freaking day. And I was bombing, bombing, bombing. And so one day the teacher goes, James, because that's my legal name, the answers are in the back. And me being the honorable person that I am, I said, well, ma'am, I can't learn Spanish by cheating. She's like, yeah, but the answers are in the back. And if you use the answers in the back, you can at least pass the class. It's like, yeah, but I'm here to learn, not cheat and pass the class. And then the most racist thing came out of her mouth. And I forgive her because at the time, I also did not know that Mexicans were indigenous. I should have known, but, you know, brain dead. School doesn't teach you everything. And she goes, um, I've never met a Mexican who can't speak Spanish. And... Me being a smart-ass 23-year-old, I said, well, first and foremost, that's very racist. And secondly, I'm not Mexican. I'm part Cherokee, Indian, and black. I kind of leave the white off sometimes. I stopped doing it as I got older. I started being more proud of all three of my cultures. But for working purposes, I'm Native American. Because I have been advised that it would probably be best if I just do that. Which is why Echo Fang Grey Wolf exists and James Williams Jr. is who you'd like to check to. Anyway, we're a working unit. Like, I am Venom. Anyway, so then I quit the class because I couldn't learn Spanish. But I still don't know a lot of Spanish. I know a little bit more Japanese than I do Spanish. But they're only words, and there's no guarantee that those words are actually correct. So you have to be careful at what you learn from the street versus learning from the school. Okay? Now that being said, we're going to take this over to anime real quick, and then I'm going to end the video. So two things for all you anime people, and then I'm ending the video. And you can get pissed off if you want, but I'm in the video because it's a stated fact that everybody who does anime, they're always talking about Naruto, or they're always talking about Goku, and who can do this and who can do that. But there's quite a few people that y'all don't bring up. So for y'all who don't bring this up, I'm bringing up three. Okay? The first two are from the Fist of the North Star. Okay, four then. The first three are from the Fist of the North Star. You don't bring up the Southern Cross. 
you don't bring up Ryle, and you don't bring up Ken. Ryle and Ken are not the Street Fighter people. Ryle and Ken, last name, Shiro. They are from Fist of the North Star. Ryle can think things, and it's going to happen to you. So he is far more deadlier than anybody in anime, period. Ken and the Southern Cross, because I forgot his damn name, but the Southern Cross can drill his fingers into your body, and Ken can hit you three times, and then before he turns all the way around, he goes, you're already a dead man, and people just blow up. So why is it that all of these uh, anime fighters, stands, and death bottles never bring these three guys up? Because they know for a fact those three guys are probably the most dangerous people in anime since anime began. Now, finally, the last person that they don't bring up in anime is the Giver. He has arms like this, but his has elbow things. So why do they not bring up the Giver? Because he is also one dangerous SOB, and they don't bring him up. So the next time that you guys go into a TikTok or a Discord or anything that's bringing up anime, why don't you guys do me a favor? In fact, do me a whole solid. By the power of Thor, I knight you, my knights. Get into these anime conversations and bring up Kinshiro from Fist of the North Star. Or bring up Rao Shiro. Or bring up the Southern Cross. Or bring up the Giver. And if they ask where they're from, tell them to take a trip through time. And find the Giver TV series, it's anime, and find the Giver movies. There's two of them. The first one was the best one. It had Mark Hamill in it. And then tell them to find Fist of the North Star. There's one animated movie, one live movie, and a TV series. The animated movie didn't end very well. I mean, it, he didn't die. But the TV series didn't end very well. He didn't die. But the movie ends much better. So, um, shout out to, um, damn it, what the hell is his name? Blonde haired, blue eyed martial artist, Gary Daniels. So, you guys should check those out. I'm Echo Fan Grey Wolf. This is Kung Fu Have a Number Two. Be seeing you. I'm also so sorry that I forgot what I wanted to film, but I got distracted.